Hey guys, welcome to this week's training. And I was looking back at some of the training that I've done at the chamber and decided that I really did want to uh, tackle this one topic. So if you have been at one of the Fast 45s, especially the early uh, ones I did, you've already gone through this training at the chamber. However, it'd be really good to refresh uh, and, um, you know, maybe revamp your elevator speech a little bit. If you've never had any uh, training on your elevator speech, I consider this one of the most crucial things that you need to have in order to become a splinter in the mind of potential clients to stand out above everybody else that does what you do. And even if no one does what you do, eventually there will be someone that does. Uh, but also you want people to remember you in a memorable way. And the number one way to do that is with your elevator speech. You use it all of the time. That's why it's so important. And then also, I think for us introverts, it can be a really good tool, a secret uh, sauce, so to speak, that prevents us from staring at someone blankly like a deer caught in headlights when they ask, what do we do? Uh, I want to take it out of, oh, I'm a realtor, or I'm an insurance agent, or uh, I'm a network marketer, or uh, whatever it is. I create online courses. Like, that all is boring, 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 okay? So I want to take it out of boring, and I want to take it into memorable. So I'm going to go ahead and pull up my slides that I used for the Fast 45 Lunch and Learn. So let me transition to that, and then go full screen. Okay, so I call it crafting your verbal business card. Uh, a lot of people call it an elevator speech, but I do think it is like a business card that will cause you to stand out. Uh, in, in like even with my physical business cards, I have the thick with the color paper in between and uh, they're just memorable. They stand out more than a typical business card. Well, that's what you want also your verbal business card to do. So... The key thought that I want you to grasp right now is think of your elevator speech as that verbal business card. And the key to an effective elevator speech is crafting it in such a way that you become a splinter in the mind of your potential client. And I'm going to show you how to do that. But that right there, to become a splinter in the mind of your potential client, is the key thought behind this whole training. How can you get stuck in their mind so that if they're trying to remember what real estate agent to go with or who to buy a product or service from in a network marketing company or whatever it is, you will stand out. I had uh, one uh, of my good friends and also a student of my Genius Communication course, which by the way, I am doing a free webinar June 11th called Work Your Biz Like a Boss in Your Own Introverted Way. I'm going to go over specific things. And then the course, my signature course, Genius Communication, will be available at a discounted price again for a limited time. And it teaches uh, everybody, but especially introverts, uh, how to basically build your business true to who you are. And there's a lot of science behind it, a lot of neat things. But anyway, she's one of my students, and she was practicing and thinking on the elevator speech because I go in depth in it in the course and she uh, cleans houses and commercial buildings and she said I know what is one thing that I do uh, for my customers and she said that is I make time for them in other words I make them time that is so true it is one of the key things that people need when they hire someone to clean their house is they need more time or they don't have time to do it and so they hire someone to do it and literally she creates anywhere from two to six to eight hours of time for people by cleaning their house so it's a brilliant thing when people ask what do you do she says i make people time now that immediately will provoke curiosity but also speak to that desire to have more time to do what you want to do and let someone else do the things that you don't want to do. So that's kind of like a preview of what we're going to get into. Now there are two key parts of your elevator speech. Number one, you've got to determine what's your fizz. People never buy products, people buy benefits. And if I've got these videos on my computer 
Um, I'll try to bring them up. If not, I'll try to bring them up after we get done because I can't remember if I still have them saved. But I've got a picture of this little Coca-Cola guy because whenever Coca-Cola did their early marketing, they were brilliant at it and that they tapped into the desire and or pain point of their customer. Um, and I first heard this idea from a business coach who was talking about when you uh, open up a can of Coke uh, or a bottle of Coke and you set it down and you forget about it, when you come back, more than likely hours later, it's going to be hot, it's going to you know, have lost its fizz. And so unless you're one of those weird people that like to drink flat sodas, you'll probably just dump it in the sink and then throw away the bottle or the can. He said, because people don't buy Coke to drink Coke, people buy Coke for the fizz. And so in the early days of the Coca-Cola marketing campaigns, uh, what was brilliant about them is they would sell that fizz. It was refreshing. Uh, it, you know, was almost like it would dance on your tongue. I mean, uh, it was happy. It, you know, it, it was uh, energizing. And so they really pushed that concerning the fizz. They also pushed the ability at the time of drinking a Coke to get that boost of energy in the day, but also to maintain a healthy weight. Now we know, you know, now we didn't know later that Coca-Cola actually had cocaine in it. So that would make sense as to why it helped with those things. So what is the fizz? You're not selling a product, you're selling a benefit. And I always recommend to have at least two to three benefits that people buy from you. So back to the example of uh, my genius communication student, her fizz is she makes time for people. Okay, so that is, you know, just a great example. Um, the other thing that, uh, or analogy you could say, is what makes you a purple cow in the midst of all the other cows? And so this comes from I believe Seth Godin, but I'm not sure. It might be someone else. But he was talking about, you know, when you, if you live in the city and you take a drive out in the country and you see all these cows, at first it's like, oh, look at the cows, look at the cows. Because, you know, you're not used to cows if you live in the city. But after seeing your hundredth cow, a cow is a cow. He said, so what will make a cow stand out is if it's a purple cow. And all of a sudden, all of the attention will be drawn to the purple cow. So that's the similar idea behind what's your fizz. What makes you purple? What makes you stand out in the midst of all the other cows? And so what do your clients really desire from you? What problems do you solve for your clients? What experience do you create for your clients? And what do your clients get with you that they cannot get elsewhere? So to take the example further of my student, not only does she make me time because she does clean my house and um, my uh, church slash uh, business office, but what she also does is she does such a good job. It's literally like after she cleans, little surprises popping up everywhere. You know, little things that she notices that a typical house cleaner never did. She notices those little things and so it's literally like a surprise uh, a ser series of gifts every time she cleans of things that um, no one else does. And so she brings that as well, a whole nother level of excellence. So it's like literally Christmas. Uh, it's so funny. So you don't want to push a product. You want to push a benefit. What problem do you solve for your clients? Now, if you, for example, let's say that you sell... Um, well, we'll just go with something that uh, I like, and that is uh, essential oils. And I uh, used to be in the network marketing for them, but I never really pushed it because network marketing wasn't really my thing. Um, but uh, when I you know, sell essential oils, I'm not selling essential oils. I'm selling a, a problem solving. You know, if you have a, a particular, like, let's say, for example, you know, a corn on your foot, uh, that's painful. Well, I sell you a solution to that with an essential oil. Um, if you're stressed, I sell you peace. If you're anxious, I sell you peace. If you uh, are feeling a little bit down, I sell you joy. And uh, plus my customer service and uh, customer satisfaction all tied into that education. People um, got education from me when they bought my oils. So there were different things that I knew people needed uh, from the oils, it was more than just the oils. 
Sally Hogshead, who is a phenomenal marketer and person to follow, wrote, better isn't better, different is better. The days of competing and saying that your product is better than another, they're over. Uh, no one cares because the market is inundated with people that do the same thing. Different. What makes you stand out? By the way, the name Hogshead, I used to always picture the head of a hog whenever I'd hear her name, and it's actually a measurement for a barrel of wine. So, if you were disturbed by her last name of picturing a hogshead, hopefully that will help you get that image out, and now you can picture a barrel of wine. Okay, so the uh, next question past what is your fizz is, are you going to uh, go after emotion or curiosity? Neurons that fire together, wire together. Scientists have discovered that all mental activity has underlying neural activity. Intense, prolonged, or repeated mental firing leaves deeper neural wiring. Now, you will not be able to have a prolonged and not necessarily a repeated mental firing with people concerning what you do. However, you can create intensity by either harnessing emotion and or curiosity. So in seconds, you can create that experience and take advantage of an intense firing that creates that neural wiring. So curiosity will provoke questions, emotions tap into the unspoken desire of your potential client. So back to my student's example. She says, I make time. And uh, so what that does is, number one, you're like, oh, well, what do you mean? You know, how do you make time? And then she can elaborate on what she does, and then she'll tap into the emotion of the unspoken the, uh, desire of the potential client that they really would just rather not do their house cleaning. They don't have time for it. They would rather devote their attention to other things. In fact, that's why I hire her, is I flat out don't have four to six hours to clean my house. It's, I, to me, if I can make $100 an hour, why would I want to clean my house? And so it's a matter of exchange for me where I'll let you clean my house. That will make me time to pursue my business. So she actually taps into both curiosity and emotion or has the potential to do that if she does it correctly. So this is important. And if you're a logical person, you may not agree with me, but here is the scientific reality. People buy out of emotion, not logic, in spite of what the logic will tell, logical will tell you. So even people that are super analytical, super precise, super logical, more than likely they will not do business with someone that they don't like. Uh, more than likely there will be some type of emotional response like uh, trust. Uh, they're sure they're making the right decision. Uh, those are emotional states that um, will prompt them and drive them to make a decision to purchase your product or service. So if you can tap into emotion, then you will have a better result versus um, the uh, just saying, hey, I'm a realtor. Uh, one of my other students, uh, her elevator speech or biz verbal business card was, have you ever driven by a house and thought I would really like to buy that house? And you know, usually people are like, well, yeah, I have. And she said, and she says, I make that happen. Now, the phrase, I make that happen, is perfect because what that communicates is, you want that house, I do all the work to get you that house. You know, I deal with all the ridiculous uh, paperwork. I deal with the negotiations. I deal with the inspections. I deal with the repairs. I work on weekends and evenings. I show your house so you don't have to like all, you know, the, if you want to sell so you can buy the dream house. You know, all of those things that no one wants to do, I do it. That's what she's communicating. So she's tapping in the desire of a home and she's also tapping into the desire of I take care of all the details. If you can use both emotion and curiosity, you will create intensity, but also provoke further conversation, which is great for us introverts when we often don't know how to transition uh, into the conversation. So these are a couple examples. Um, I did include Melissa's um, that I just talked about, which I forgot I had that on that slide. So this is, the first one is for my friend who used to own um, Providence Gar Garden here in town. And she say, hi, I'm Lauren. With Providence Garden, we are a nursery and landscaping company, a one-stop shop 
for all your outdoor needs. So she, number one, my, this is my name. This is the name of the company. This is what we do. We're a nursery and landscaping company. And then the one stop shop right there is the emotion getter. In other words, I don't want to go all over town to get my, you know, uh, landscaping and nursery needs. I can go get it all done in one place. Now, this is an old one. I still use this to a degree, but it's basically, hi, I'm Sherry. I train professionals to persuade without saying a word to increase sales and closings. Now, a lot of people say, what do you do? And one of the number one things I say, at least locally, because I deal with a lot of local business owners and I've discovered it's something I'm very good at, is I say, I help businesses make more money. And I mean, that is like legit. I just help people make more money. Um, then they're usually like, oh, well, how do you do that? And so then I'll go into how I do it, you know, with body language and personalities and flipping the light switch and emotional intelligence and all of that stuff. But, and, you know, team dynamics, all of that. But, you know, as far as like even introverts, you know, is I empower introverted entrepreneurs to, uh, you know, basically um, get their message across clearly and confidently. Um, another one is uh, I take the awkward out by showing you the how. So, I mean, there's so many things that you can do and you don't have to have just one elevator speech, but I do recommend that if you have one particular target audience, get that elevator speech created, practice it in front of the mirror, record yourself, make sure you gesture, uh, practice it in front of friends, uh, get with a group of professionals and, you know, maybe uh, help each other with them and tweak them and things like that. But use emotion and curiosity in what is your fizz. And then, of course, the last one is, hi, I'm Melissa. Have you ever driven by a house and wish you could live there? I make that happen. Okay, so let me transition out of this and get back over to the video. Okay, so anyway, I would love, 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 love to um, see some of your stuff. Uh, I would love for you to even... Um, shoot your elevator speech and post it on our groups that we can maybe critique and offer suggestions. Uh, you know, I've, I've said this before, I have the dilemma of having, uh, you know, an, a group of introverted entrepreneurs. I mean, probably 98% of you are introverted, which is really hard to get you guys on camera and which is really hard to get you to comment. <laughs> so, but it would be great because we could help one another with the elevator speeches. When I did this training at the chamber, that's literally what we did. After we got done uh, with the, the slides I just went, took you through, people literally created their elevator speeches and practiced on one another, and we, and we all critiqued them, and they came up with some really, really good stuff. So uh, to practice maybe being more out there and assertive, uh, I would highly suggest that you at least post what you think your elevator speech is with a little bit of your background as far as what you do in business or just get on there live or do a quick uh, elevator speech and upload it to our uh, Facebook group here. Now, uh, the elevator speech should probably be no uh, more than 30 seconds. For some people, 60 seconds might work, but I like 30 seconds because again, you're just trying to become a splinter, not a plank, but a splinter in the mind of the person you're talking to. And the reason it's so important to practice saying your elevator speech is you don't want to, you know, like memorize it. And then when you're in the environment, you freeze and you're all, uh, I sell real estate. You know, like you don't want to have that situation. So that's why I say practice it in front of a mirror. Record yourself doing it with hand gestures. Uh, critique yourself. Look at it. And then practice it in front of a group of trusted people. The thing is, if you do it in front of friends, a lot of times to not hurt your feelings, they will say, oh, it's wonderful, blah, blah, blah. And it might have been horrible. So you want to make sure that you're doing it in front of people that will give you honest feedback that can be tactful, but also it is helpful and you can tweak your elevator speech as needed. So anyway, I hope that helps you guys. And uh, again, I would love to see your stuff, guys. I would absolutely love to see it. I'm hoping that maybe we can generate some more of that on this uh, Facebook group as we grow. But I would highly recommend that you do that so that we can help you here. So anyway, I will talk to you guys next week on the next training. I might do maybe something without slides next week. I'm not sure. But I, again, was looking back and decided that this would be a really good one for tonight. So until then, have a great night.